Yeah, yesterday night. Did Sarah Purnima go? Yes, she went. You both went? Yes, my mother also. Your mother also went? Wonderful. Okay. So let me, I have to open the book. I don't have my book, wait. <laughs> uh, got everything closed. I, I opened to, to get in. I closed down the computer, everything. It still couldn't get in. Let me see, where is this? Books. Or you want me to share the screen, Guru Maharaj? Have now you, we are at the mantra too, right? Have you got the English? Yes, I can I can search from database. I don't know what happened to my English book. Mm. It should be in here. I can't find it. Okay, we'll use yours. Mm. I don't see it in here. Okay, you, you put yours on the screen, share the screen. Okay, Omakyana Tamarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyana Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Vancha Kaupata Rupyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Okay, so we're going through the Ishopanishad, we're beginning mantra to today. Ishopanishad, 
Kurvan evaha karmani jajivishek chatam samaha evam twai nanyate tosti na karma lepyate nare. One may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continuously goes on working in that way, for that sort of work will not bind him to the law of karma. There is no alternative to this way for man. So this verse follows on from the first mantra. In the first mantra, we were advised that we should accept only enough, only what is our quota, we should not take more. And we should understand that everything in the world belongs to the Supreme Lord. And whatever we have, it is given to us by the grace of the Supreme Lord. So we can see in this verse the result of acting according to the instruction of the first verse. The result is that we're not and we're not affected by the laws of karma. If we just take what's sufficient for ourselves, we won't get a lot of karma. And the, and the result of that would be that you may live a long life. Alright, so we'll read Prabhupada's purport. No, no one wants to die. Everyone wants to live as long as he can drag on. This tendency is visible not only individually, but also collectively in the community, society and nation. There is a hard struggle for life by all kinds of living entities. And the Vedas say that this is quite natural. The living being is eternal by nature, but due to his bondage in material existence, he has to change his body over and over. This process is called transmigration of the soul or karma bandhana, bondage by one's work. The living entity has to work for his livelihood because that is the law of material nature. And if he does not act according to his prescribed duties, he transgresses the law of nature and binds himself more and more to the cycle of birth and death in the many species of life. ทุกคนต้องการมีชีวิตอยู่ยืนยาวเท่าที่จะเป็นไปได้แนวโน้มเช่นนี้ไม่เพียงแต่ปรากฏเฉพาะปัจเจกชนเท่านั้นแต่
เรียกว่าการเปลี่ยนร่างของดวงวิญญาณและการเปลี่ยนร่างนี้ก็เนื่องมาจากการมาบันเดนะหรือพันธนาการอยู่กับงานซึ่งมีชีวิตต้องทำงานเพื่อยังชีพเพราะนั่นเป็นกฎแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุหากไม่ปฏิบัติตามหน้าที่ที่กำหนดไว้เท่ากับเราฝืนกฎแห่งธรรมชาติและจะถูกพันธนาการมากยิ่งขึ้นในวัฏจักรแห่งการเกิดและการตาย So Srila Prabhupada explains how we would all like to live forever. We don't like to die. And that is natural because that is the nature of the soul. But The, na- the, the body is not like that. The body is of a different nature. The body is temporary. So what, what is material is eternal. And what is spiritual, or what is material is temporary. And what is, sp- spir- what is spiritual is eternal. So the body takes birth, and because it takes birth, it will also die one day. But for the soul, there's no birth, and so there is no death. We would all like to live forever in the material body, but that's impossible. What happens is we take what we have one body, and that body will die one day. And then we will take another body. And we take different kinds of bodies every time. There are many, many different bodies. And all the different bodies which have life have a soul. The birds have life, they have a soul. The trees have life, they have a soul. And the fish in the sea, they have life, they also have souls. And there's no difference between In the soul, which is in the fish, or in the animal, or in the bird, or in the man, there's only one type of soul. It's not like there's a different soul for different bodies. So Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, everyone has to work. The birds work to get their food, in the same way the human beings, they also have to work to feed themselves. So this is the law of the material nature. And this law keeps us in the material world. It causes us to take birth again and again. Okay, we'll read the next paragraph. Okay. Other life forms are also subject to the cycle of birth and death. But when the living entity attains a human life, he gets a chance 
to get free from the chains of karma. Karma, akarma and vikarma are very clearly described in the Bhagavad Gita. Actions that are performed in terms of one's prescribed duties, as mentioned in the revealed scripture, are called karma. Actions that free one from the cycle of birth and death are called akarma, and actions that are performed through the misuse of one's freedom and that and that direct one to the lower life forms are called vikarma. Of these three types of action, that which frees one from the bondage to karma is preferred by intelligent men. Ordinary men wish to perform good work in order to be recognized and achieve some higher status of life in this world or in heaven. But more advanced men want to be free altogether from the actions and reactions of work. Intelligent men well know that both good and bad work equally bind one to the material world, to the material miseries. Consequently, they seek that work which will free them from the reactions of both good and bad work. Such liberating work is described there in the pages of Sri Ishopanishad. รูปแบบชีวิตอื่นที่ทำการเช่นการมนุษย์ได้รับโอกาสที่จะเป็นอิสระจากกฎแห่งกรรมหรือคาร์มะคาร์มะอคาร์มะและวิคาร์มะได้
Of course, sometimes we use the word karma in a different way and we say, well, it's my karma. We say, it's, it's, it's some reaction which is coming to me. But here we're using karma in a different sense. We're talking about activity, work, actually doing work which we're meant to do. But then there are vi there are activities which are called vikarma, and vikarma means acts which are against the scriptures. When we do sinful activities like we eat food which is not according to scriptures, we eat meat or fish or eggs, then we get, we, this is called vikarma, we get severe reactions for this. If we take some kind of intoxication, then that's also V karma. We get reactions for that. Anything which is done, which is against the instructions of the scriptures, that is called vikarma. But then there is akarma. Akarma means we do, we engage in devotional service. Hmm. Our karma means that we're acting simply for the pleasure of Krishna. And the result of our karma is that we get free of birth and death in the material world. So Srila Prabhupada points out to us in this purport, he said that intelligent people, they won't try to do karma or vikarma. They will simply want to get out of the material world. Sometimes people do karma, they, they do activities, they want to enjoy the pious results. They, they know that if they do some pious activity, they will get some good result and they want to enjoy that good result. But intelligent people don't want to enjoy the material world. They want to get out of the material world. We don't, we don't want to stay here in this material world, we want to get out. So if you do karma or you do vikarma, the result of both these activities is you stay in the material world. But if you do akarma, if you do work for Krishna, then you can get out of the material world. Okay, we'll go ahead. The next paragraph. Oh. 
the instructions of Sri Ishampanishad are more elaborately explained in the Bhagavad Gita, sometimes called the Gita Upanishad, the cream of all the Upanishads. In the Bhagavad Gita 3, 9 to 16, chapter 3, verses 9 to 16, the Personality of Godhead says that one cannot attain the state of nice karmya or akarma without executing the prescribed duties mentioned in the Vedic literature. This literature can regulate the working energy of a human being in such a way that he can gradually realize the authority of the Supreme Being. When he realizes the authority of the Personality of Godhead, Vasudev or Krishna, it is to be understood that he has attained the stage of positive knowledge. In this purified stage, the modes of nature, namely goodness, passion and ignorance cannot act and he is able to work on the basis of nice karmya. Such work does not bind one to the cycle of birth and death. Okay. Okay. ละเอียดถี่ถ้วนในพระคัตถ์กีตาบางครั้งเรียกว่ากิโตปนิชัดซึ่งเป็นเนื้อหาสาระสำคัญของอุปนิชัดในพระคัตถ์กีตาสามจ
ังความรู้นี้ได้เนี่ยเราจะก็จะต้องอปรับให้เราเนี่ยมาปรับพลังงานของเรา So we have to, first of all we have to get rid of the modes of passion and ignorance come up to the mode of goodness And then we have to go on from the, the mode of goodness to transcend the mode of goodness and come to the level of pure goodness. And when we come to the level of pure goodness, then we can get out of the wheel of birth and death. And we're able to work, but we work in a detached manner. Hello, Anshina. Anshina. Yes, good day. What happened? Where are you? Oh, I thought my connection got a little problem. Okay. So I'm, I said, when we come to the level of pure goodness, then we can get free from the wheel of birth and death. And then, but at the same time, we should understand that we we continue working, but we work with the consciousness that we're working for Krishna. We don't stop working. We keep working. But we give the results for the pleasure of Krishna. We'll read some more. Factually, no one has to do anything more than render devotional service to the Lord. However, in the lower stages of life, one cannot immediately adopt the activity of devotional service, nor can one completely stop fruitive work. A conditioned soul is accustomed to working for sense gratification for his own selfish interest, immediate or extended. An ordinary man works for his own sense enjoyment, and when this principle of sense enjoyment is extended to include his society, nation, or humanity in general, it assumes various attractive names such as altruism, socialism, communism, nationalism, and humanitarianism. These isms are certainly very attractive forms of karma bandana, karmic bondage. But the Vedic instruction of Sri Ishopanishad is that if one actually wants to live for any of the above isms, he should make them God-centered. There is no harm in being a family man. Or an altruist, a socialist, a communist, a nationalist, or a humanitarian, provided that one executes his activities in relation with Ishavashya, the God-centered conception. <laughs> อย่างไรก็ดีในระดับชีวิตที่ต่ําจะไม่สามารถรับเอากิจกรรมแห่งการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ได้องค์พระขวายอย่างไรก็ดีในระดับชีวิต
ไม่ว่าในวงแคบหรือวงกว้างคนทั่วไปทำงานเพื่อความรื่นรมทางประสาทสัมผัสของตนเองเมื่อหลักการแห่งการรื่นรมทางประสาทสัมผัสนี้ขยายวงออกไปรวมถึงสังคมประเทศชาติและมนุษยชาติโดยทั่วไปจะมีชื่อที่ไพเราะต่างๆเช่นลัทธิการกุศลลัทธิสังคมนิยมลัทธิคอมมิวนิสต์ลัทธิชาตินิยมลัทธิเพื่อมวลมนุษยชาติลัทธิเหล่านี้แน่นอนว่าเป็นรูปแบบที่มีความดึงดูดใจของคารมาบันเดนงานที่พันธนาการแต่คำสั่งสอนของพระเวสในอุปนิชัดคือหากเราปฏิบัติหากเราปรารถนาจะมีชีวิตอยู่เพื่อลัทธิต่างๆอย่างแท้จริงแล้วควรทำลัทธิเหล่านี้ให้มีองค์พระขวานเป็นศูนย์กลางไม่มีผลเสียหายอันใดในการที่มาเป็นคฤหัสนักการกุศลนักสังคมนิยมนักคอมมิวนิสต์นักชาตินิยมหรือนักมนุษย์นิยมหากว่าทำกิจกรรมของตนเองในความสัมพันธ์กับอิชาวาชาหรือแนวความคิดที่มีองค์พระขวานเป็นศูนย์กลาง Alright, so Srila Prabhupada is explaining that for ordinary people in the beginning, it will be difficult for them to just take up devotional service. The reason is because we're very attached to enjoying our work and to enjoying the results of our work. ในตอนต้นอาจจะเป็นเช่นนั้นเพราะว่ามันจะเป็นการยากมากที่เขาเนี่ยจะต้องเสียสละผลของการผลของงานของเขาหรือว่าผลแห่งการที่เขาจะได้รื่นเริงจากผลงานของเขา If we ask people to follow four regulative principles, they can't do it. ถ้าเราบอกผู้คนว่าให้มาปฏิบัติตามสินสี่ข้อ Many people tell us, "No, I have to eat meat. I can't live without meat." And then people also like other things. You know, they are attached to smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol. And then they want sex all the time. They want to enjoy having sex. So it's very difficult for them to follow strictly the principles of devotional service. And if we give them beads and ask them to chant, even they cannot do that very well. And so these these kind of people, they have to be encouraged to work. They should be they should continue their work, but at the same time, they should be encouraged to sacrifice some of the results of their work for the service of Krishna. สำหรับบุคคลประเภทนี้เนี่ยเขาควรที่จะทำงานของเขาต่อไปแต่เขาควรที่จะเรียนรู้ในการที่จะเสียสละผลของงานของเขาเนี่ยให้กับองค์พระวานบ้าง So by sacrificing some of the results of their work, they will get purified. จากการถ้าเกิดว่าเขาทำเช่นนั้นเนี่ยเขาเสียสละผลของงานของเขาให้องค์พระวานบ้างเนี่ยมันจะทำให้เขาบริสุทธิ์ขึ้น And Srila Prabhupada talks how there's many different ways in which people are attached to working. There, some people work for the, the. They're thinking about their country very much. They're very nationalistic. And some other people, they're. Very much inclined towards mankind, they think mankind is important. We should only think about mankind and no other. The other living entities, the animals, the trees, and so on, they 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 don't matter. Everything is just there for the for the humans. It's humans who should enjoy everything. 
แล้วก็บางคนเนี่ยก็จะเป็นนักแบบว่ามนุษย์นิยมแต่เขาก็จะคิดว่าทุกเอามนุษย์เป็นศูนย์กลางแล้วคิดว่าทุกอย่างเนี่ยมันถูกสร้างมาเพื่อให้มนุษย์มีความสุขยึดแต่อย่างเดียวเขาจะเน้นให้ความสําคัญกับมนุษย์เป็นหลัก And then some people are communist. The communist, they, they say everything belongs to the state, belongs to the nation. So no one can have any land. All the land belongs to the government, belongs to the state. พื้นที่ใดๆเอาทุกที่ดินทุกส่วนมันควรเป็นของรัฐบาล So s h i l a p r a p a d said Krishna consciousness is spiritual communism ก็ชาเออสิลาปาวานเนี่ยบอกว่าก็ชาที่สำนึกเนี่ยเป็นนักทิศนิยม We say everything belongs to Krishna เราเราจะบอกกันว่าทุกอย่างเนี่ยมันเป็นของ Krishna But the ideals behind communism are very good, and we have similar ideals in Krishna consciousness movement. We agree with that. We want to work off the land and use the land to produce crops to feed the people. เรามีพื้นที่เนี่ยเราก็จะปลูกสิ่งของต่างๆเพื่อให้มันได้ได้ผลผลิตมาแล้วก็ผลผลิตที่ได้เนี่ยพืชพันธุ์ยาหาเนี่ยก็ให้มนุษย์ได้กิน We don't we don't just think of our own enjoyment but we think about helping others เราไม่เพียงแต่คิดเพื่อความสุขของตัวเราเองเท่านั้นแต่เราคิดถึงการช่วยเหลือ And we see people equally as well. This is an important principle of the communist philosophy that everyone is equal. Of course, sometimes people argue that in the Vedic culture, people are not equal. They say the Brahmins are given a higher position than the other people. But we say, well, spiritually, everyone is equal. Spiritually, everyone is a pure spirit soul. Of course, on the material platform, we're not equal. We see somebody is rich and somebody is poor, and somebody is healthy and strong, and someone else is sick and weak. Someone gets very good education, and someone doesn't get any education. And someone may be very good looking, and somebody else not good looking at all. So we see materially, people are not equal. But on the spiritual platform, everyone is equal. And Krishna sees everyone equally. He sees everyone equal. The all spirit souls, they're all his parts and partials. So Srila Prabhupada is suggesting here that whatever philosophy you have about life, he said that's all right. He said you can have that philosophy, but just add also Krishna consciousness to it. So Prabhupada is saying that whatever philosophy you have about life, he said just add also Krishna consciousness to it. 
Yeah, if you're going to be a nationalist and you want to be concerned about your country, then do it in God consciousness. We should remember that the country, the land of the country actually belongs to God. It was here before all of us. As Srila Prabhupada talks about the Ishyavashya concept, this is the important term which everyone should be familiar with. Ishavashya. Isha meaning the Supreme Lord. And Vashya means in the center of everything. This word Ishavasya came in the very first mantra, mantra one. Ishavasyam idam sarvam yatkincha jagadyam jagad tena chaktena punjitaha mokridaha kusha suddhanam. So, Ishavasyam idam sarvam, Ishavasya. This is the word which means the God centered conception. <laughs> And we're studying today, we're studying the Isha Upanishad, the Isha, so the, this is the Upanishad about the Supreme Lord. So Prabhupada called this book, he gave the subtitle, subtitle for this book, The Knowledge Which Brings One Closer to the Supreme Absolute Truth. So we have to understand that there is a person who is the represent who is the directly the absolute truth. We are we're not the absolute truth, but we're tiny 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 parts of the Supreme Absolute Truth. We want to understand our relationship with the Absolute Truth. Ultimately, the Absolute Truth is the Supreme Controller above everything. And any activity which we can do in relation to the Absolute Truth, that will benefit us, that will purify us. But if we do these activities which are mentioned here, if we are performing some work for the benefit of the poor, or we are helping some unfortunate people, unlucky people, maybe we are doing some welfare work. And so this, this work is very good, but it's material, and it will keep us in the material world. <laughs> งานนี้มันก็ถือว่าเป็นงานดีแต่ว่ามันก็จะเป็นงานที่ทําให้เราเนี่ย 
อยู่ในโลกวัตถุนี้ต่อไป We have to constantly remember what is the goal of life. Well, the goal of life is to get out of this world of birth and death. Lord Krishna spoke the Vedic knowledge to help all of us to get out of this world of birth and death. Krishna knows that we cannot be happy in this world for very long. And he he wants us to come back to him in the spiritual world. That's why he comes here. Krishna personally comes here again and again. And when he comes, he will teach, like just like he spoke the Bhagavad Gita. But he doesn't just simply come to teach. He comes to show us the position of the supreme personality of Godhead. And he wants us to know that we're not the supreme. We can never be the supreme. But we can be his unalloyed devotees. We can be his pure devotees. All right. So we will stop here today. Are there any, are there any questions? Shaya has a question today. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Krishna Guru Maharaj. Then I want to please accept my humble obeisances. Okori to Sri Prabhupada. Happy New Year, Guru Maharaj. Happy New Year to you. Yes. Ajana ha. Um. Kam tham hong pi ah ah jagyo hong ka ah jana ya karitam bita na ha. อยากจะรบทวนคำคุณมหาราชอยากจะให้แนะนำนิดนึงว่าอย่างกรณีของนิตยานันดาตอนเขาที่พยายามให้คริสนากับคนอื่นอย่างเงี้ยค่ะแล้วก็เหมือนว่าโดนทำลายร่างกายแล้วก็มีความได้รับการบาดเจ็บแล้วก็เหมือนกับว่าได้รับความทุกข์อะไรเงี้ยค่ะในเมื่อถ้าเกิดว่าเราปฏิบัติ devotional service เราควรจะมีความสุขใช่ไหมคะในกรณีของนิตยานันดาเขาเหมือนกับได้รับความเจ็บปวดตรงเนี้ยค่ะถ้าเกิดว่าระหว่างเราสาวกพวกเราเนี่ยค่ะกําลังทํา devotional service หรือการให้ปิชนากับคนอื่นเนี่ยแล้วก็มีอารมณ์เดียวกับโหลดนิยานันดาโดยที่แบบอาจจะได้รับการเสียใจในการที่เรากําลังปฏิบัติรับใช้อยู่นะนะคะถ้าเกิดเรามีเหตุการณ์เนี้ยอยากให้กรุมหาราชแนะนําการปฏิบัติตัวหน่อยอะค่ะเข้าใจพี่ไหมเข้าใจโอเคขอบคุณค่ะฮาริปิชนาโอเคกุรมาชา question is uh, from the story of Lord uh, Chaitanya so when Lord Nityananda he was trying to preach to others and then he will get uh, get some get hurt uh, but actually when we try to pre preach about Krishna to others it should be like good result But why he is suffering because of uh, trying to give Krishna to others? Some similarly in our uh, life also, when we try to do the same thing like Lord Nityananda, he try, uh, but we will also face some problem or difficulties in life. 
why is that happen and how we should deal with that kind of situation? Well, you have to understand that not everyone is a devotee. And when we try to preach to them, some people, they don't like it. We're trying to introduce God consciousness, Krishna consciousness, and remember, we're here in the material world. So this material world is a place, it's quite an evil place. There's a lot of bad people here. And you may try to teach something and some people get very angry, they don't like it, yeah, and they, you get, you get, just like Lord Nichananda, he went to these two men, and they were drunk, and they were intoxicated, and so they hit him. แล้วก็เขาว่าพวกไม่ไม่บุคคลที่มีจิตสำนึกที่เป็นมาเนี่ยอยู่เยอะมากก็เลยทําให้พวกเขาเนี่ยจะไม่ยอมรับเกี่
จ้าเจตเนียกล้องจะทรงสังหารสองคนนี้ไม่ได้เพราะว่าในกาลียุคนี้เนี่ยมีแต่มาหรือว่ามีแต่บุคคลประเภทนี้เนี่ยเต็มไปหมด In this age, we have to be merciful. We have to be tolerant. And at the same time, we keep trying to teach. p r a b h u p a d said, "In the beginning of our Krishna consciousness movement." People would laugh at us. They would laugh at us because they saw us with their shaved heads and shika and the funny dress, wearing the the clothes, the dhoti, like what we wear. And people in the West, they had never seen this before, and they were laughing at us. But then, Prabhupada said, after some time, they will hate us. They would hate us because they saw us always chanting and dancing and distributing books, and you know they didn't like to see us so happy. They didn't like to see us enjoying. And Prabhupada said, then the third stage. He said, "Finally, he said they will join us." Mm. So sometimes we see these stages go, th these stages in, our, in the course of our teaching Krishna consciousness. That for some time people they don't like us, and then after a while, then they may like us so much that they may even join. Our movement. We have to be tolerant. So it's not an easy it's not an easy job to go and try to teach people about. Krishna consciousness. Of course, we should find people who want to hear about Krishna. But in the course of looking for people who want to hear about Krishna, sometimes, you know, we disturb other people. <laughs> But remember, this is the material world. Not everyone is a devotee. Not, not everyone is ready to become a devotee here. So that's why sometimes we get difficulties. Do you understand, Shaya? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. How do I understand, Guru Maharaj? Please, uh, blessing me for. Uh, Give me some power to preaching and bring um, Krishna to everyone, and I need um, Mayavati to oh, um, delights to God Krishna in this, their life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes.
some more questions here? Yes, yes, maybe. Yes, Kongsa. Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. As I said, my humble syllable. Up, he gets an app for me, have time, make a time, Guru Maharaj. Well, hello, Yaka, Susa, Ubani Satya, me, Om Poko, Yang Lai Bang, have the go. His question is how can he read uh, Ishopanishad and how should be his attitude towards learning this book or objective? The like the goal of learning this book. Well, the goal of learning this book is it will bring you closer to Krishna. You have to hear, you have to hear it carefully and if you don't understand anything then you just simply inquire and we will explain. But these Upanishads, they are the part of the original Vedic knowledge. So the Vedic knowledge comes originally from Lord Krishna, it was put into the heart of Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma passed the knowledge down into the people of the world. You understand the Vedas are like a handbook. It's like, just like you buy a new machine, you get a manual how to operate the machine and how to take care of the machine. So the Vedas are the knowledge how to live in this world and how to take care of this world and how to live peacefully and happily in this world and to get liberation at the end of life. <laughs> So you read this book with us every day, every time we have class, you come for the class and here we're explaining this book. If you cannot understand something, you ask. Is that all right, Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yuna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances of Guru Shushila Prabhupada. Uh, most of people believe that the Karma Kanda is like a road to heaven uh, and they think uh, this is enough for them. Uh, pious activity is okay and uh, they shouldn't do uh, something else. And uh, they uh, couldn't understand the difference between um, pious activity and uh, Krishna service. And how can we um, explain them this difference? Thank you. Well, 
Well, pious activity will simply, the best, can take us to the heavenly planets, but it cannot take us out of the material world. It cannot free us from birth and death. But by serving Krishna, we can get free of birth and death. กิจกรรมบุญเนี่ยก็เป็นกิจกรรมที่จะคอยส่งผลบุญให้กับเราซึ่งผลบุญนั้นเนี่ยอาจจะทําให้เราเนี่ยไปบนโลกสวรรค์
การสวดโดยปราศจากความต้องการทางวัตถุนั้นหมายความว่าการที่เราเนี่ยสวดมนต์เพื่อความสุขของ We call the name of Krishna. We're calling Krishna to come. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. We want Krishna. We want. We don't want anything else. We just want Krishna, the person. แล้วการที่เราสวด Hare Krishna แปลว่าเราร้องเรียกให้ Krishna เนี่ยส่งมาเราบอกว่าเราไม่ต้องการให้ใครมาเราต้องการให้ Krishna Krishna is the most handsome. He's the most good-looking. He's the most wealthy. He's the most famous, and he's very strong, and he's very renounced as well. You could not get a better man than Krishna. <laughs> ทรงมีความสง่างามมากที่สุดทรงมีความมั่งคั่งมากที่สุดทรงเสียสละทรงมีความแข็งแรงมากที่สุด So Krishna is attracted to devotion. If you're a pure devotee, then Krishna is very pleased and he will be attracted to you. Krishna สิ่งที่จะสามารถดึงดูด Krishna ได้ก็คือการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ต่อพระองค์เท่านั้นที่จะทำให้พระองค์เนี่ยทรงทันเหมหาเราได้ So just like Rukmini, there was this beautiful young girl named Rukmini. She was a princess, a king's daughter, and she was very very beautiful. And she heard about Krishna, and when she heard about Krishna, she didn't want any other man. มีสาวน้อยหญิงสาวคนหนึ่งที่ชื่อว่ารุกมินีเขาเนี่ยได้ยินเกี่ยวกับเรื่องราวของพระชนะหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยไม่ต้องการอะไรอีกนอกจากพระชนะ And she said even if I don't get Krishna in this lifetime I don't uh, she said I'm willing to undergo austerities for many lifetimes so that one day I will eventually get Krishna for my husband และนางก็มีความปรารถนาที่จะอยากจะใจงานกับพระชนะอย่างเดียวแล้วก็นางก็บอกว่าถึงแม้ข้าจะไม่ได้รับพระชนะในชาตินี้ก็ไม่เป็นไรแต่ข้าจะพยายามปฏิบัติความสมถะเพื่อให้ข้าเนี่ยได้มีโอกาสในการได้พระชนะมาเป็นสามีถึงแม้ข้าจะต้องปฏิบัติความเพียรหลายหลายชาติก็ตาม So when Krishna got her message and he knew what she was thinking so Krishna came and he Kidnapped her, took her away. She became his wife. And she has so much love for Krishna that even when they were all, even when they've been together and they had children, and their children had grown up and married, they had grandchildren. But Rukmini and Krishna, they didn't grow old. They they had their bodies were so pure that they didn't go. They didn't suffer old age. So one day Krishna would sometimes sometimes Krishna would joke with Rukmini. And one day he said to Rukmini, he said to her, he said, "You know, I'm not really fit to be your husband. There were many kings who wanted to marry you, and I stole you away from all these other kings. And I'm only a cowherd boy. I'm not really qualified to be your husband. You're a king's daughter, and I'm just from a family who raised cows." <laughs> ยกล้อกับรุกมินีแล้วก็บอกว่ารุกมินีเธอรู้ไหมความจริงเนี่ยฉันน่ะไม่คู่ควรกับเธอเลยนะเธอเนี่ยเป็นถึงลูกลูกสาวของพระราชาฉันเนี่ยเป็นแค่คนฉันพ่อค้าเฉยๆเนี่ยเพราะฉันก็เลี้ยงวัวแล้วก็ทำธุรกิจเกี่ยวกับฟาร์มอย่างเดียวเลยแบบแต่แต่ว่าฉันเนี่ยไม่คู่ควรกับเธอเลย And when Rukmini heard this, when he, she heard that Krishna was saying, you know, that I'm not really qualified to be your husband, you should go and marry some other man. 
Rukmini just fainted. She just fell on unconscious. She just couldn't even bear the thought of it. So she has so much love for Krishna. We also, we have to develop our love for Krishna. Instead of loving Maya, instead of loving the material world, we have to love Krishna. The material world will never make us happy, will never satisfy us. But Krishna will satisfy us forever. All right. Oh, what's this? Is this another question here or what? Yes, Guru Maharaj, from Vaishnavi Maharaj. Vaishnavi has a question, yeah? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, my question is, like, uh, I was thinking if the good karma, like a good house, good family members, can help us to uh, do Krishna conscious more easily. Like, if we have a good house, we can invite devotees, and if we have some wealth, we can serve the devotees. So, what is it like good karma from previous birth will help us in Krishna consciousness, Guru Maharaj? ทางทางของมาตรีนะคะถามว่าถ้าเกิดว่าในถ้าเกิดว่าจากผลแห่งการที่เราเคยทําความดีมาเนี่ยมันทําให้เราเนี่ยได้มีบ้านที่ใหญ
and they can use it for Krishna's service. But don't think we have to have these things before we can spread Krishna consciousness. That's not true. You just simply have to have the desire to want to distribute the message of Krishna. And then Krishna will send everything. Krishna will arrange everything. Sometimes he may send some rich people and sometimes he may send all poor people. But we engage everybody in Krishna's service. We don't care. We don't care rich or poor. We don't say Krishna consciousness is only for the rich. It's for everyone. Well, Krishna consciousness is a spiritual movement. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati got a new temple and then he saw when they got the new temple, devotees were arguing, I will have this room, this will be my room. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was so upset, he said, better we sell the marble in the temple and use it to print books. You have the nice house, you, you'll attract only rich people. <laughs> you, the ordinary people, the people that may think, oh, oh this person's got a very big house, he must be very rich. They think, oh, I, I don't know if I want to go to the program there. I don't. He's so, he's so rich man, he's so high class. I'm only an ordinary person. <laughs> so material facilities, yeah, we can use them for Krishna, but we don't depend on them. Sometimes Krishna may give facilities, a lot of facilities, sometimes may not. <laughs> Prabhupada never worried about property and money and so many things. Prabhupada just concentrated to preach. If, if people come with money and houses, okay, let them use it for Krishna. We're just going to keep preaching. We don't care whether there's a lot of money or no money, if it's a big house or no house. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand now. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the question. Okay, well, thank Archana for her translation. Thank all the devotees for participation. And wish everyone Happy New Year and hope to see you on Wednesday and Friday. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Yay.